in the recent LS versus Coyote 3 dyno competition. The Coyote eked out a victory over the 5.3 LT engine by less than 20 horsepower. Afterward, there were many questions about the turbos and how the turbo might have played a factor in the competition. 1419 and then 1151. Ooh, that's a good torque jump. Oh yeah. That's a good torque jump. We decided to do a deep dive into turbo sizing and what is going to happen when we drag race these engines. Hi, I'm Greg Acosta, lead content creator of Engine Labs and the host for Horsepower Wars LS vs Coyote 3. In our recent uh, dyno conclusion of LS vs Coyote 3, uh, it was obvious that our turbos were too small. So I want to address that and let's talk some tech and explain what happened. So the first thing we need to do is define the sizes of the turbos, right? Um, there's two primary uh, components of a turbo that we talk about their size. That's the compressor wheel, pardon my horrible drawing skills, and the turbine wheel, right? So this is the compressor wheel, that'll be the C, and this is the turbine wheel. This is where the fresh air comes in. Fresh air comes in here. This is spinning, slings it out. Exhaust comes down this way and spits it out this way. All right? So there's two terms we need to know, the inducer and the exducer. Since the airflow comes in this way, this is the first part right here that the air hits. That's called the inducer. Because this is the last thing the air touches, that's called the exducer on the compressor side. Now, if we go into the turbine side, because the airflow goes like this, that makes this the inducer and this the exducer. So they're flopped. Um, and the reason that's important is because we talk about their size in the naming convention. Uh, so for uh, HPT Turbo, they classified this particular turbo that we use as an F3. So that's an F3 turbo. And in their nomenclature, that is basically the same as a T4. So that's a mid-frame turbo. Uh, it's the second part of the name of the turbo is the 7680, right? So what does that name mean? Well, that means that the inducer of the compressor is 76 millimeter, right? And the exhaust exducer is 80 millimeter. So that's, that's how that's explained. That gives you a rough estimate of how the turbo is going to perform because, for example, uh, the, the one below and the one above would be the 7675. So, you know, that obviously has a smaller turbine side. And then the 7880. So then it's the same turbine side as we have, but with a larger compressor. Uh, so what we used, obviously, was the 7680. Um, that tells you everything you need to know about that particular model. Now, in the competition, both teams ran the exact same compressor wheel, they ran the exact same compressor housing, they ran the exact same turbine wheel, but they had cho the choice of turbine housing. Now, why does that make a difference? Well, because of something called AR ratio. So what AR ratio is, let me, let me try to draw a turbo without embarrassing myself too badly, right? And then there's the wheel, okay? So the, the area is a point right at the inlet, about right here, where they measure the, the area of the compressor housing, and then they take that and divide it by the distance from that measurement of the center of the compressor housing. Now that's not right here necessarily, it's a mathematical equation. This is, this is getting really techy. Um, and so then that distance, you know, here to here will then be the second part. That just comes up with a number to tell us how big the relative size of the exhaust housing is. So to know, like for example, in the 7680, the options were 0 0.96 AR or 1.24 AR. So what that means, the 0.96 AR, that will spool up faster because it has a smaller exhaust housing, but it will reach its max efficiency a lot sooner. So it'll choke sooner. The 124, which is what we used, has a much larger 
exhaust housing. So it may take longer to spool up before it you know, maxes out the, the capabilities of that housing. Now, obviously, we didn't have any problem choking the turbo because we were making so much exhaust. So even though we had the larger one, it was still too small. Typically, on a, on a drag car, you would see a higher AR ratio because you want more peak power. But on like something like a road race car or like something where you want a lot of response on the street, you would have a lower AR so that it spools up quicker and behaves you know, more response, more like an NA car. There was also a 128 divided housing, but that's something we could talk about in a whole set, series of articles. Uh, needless to say, no one used it. So they both used the 124 AR. However, there was one difference between LME's and FFRE's turbo, and that was with the exhaust flange. Uh, the T4 turbo was the flange that uh, LME used, and that's just the typical rectangular flange, and a, a T4 flange will be approximately three inches across and two inches high, right? So that's about six inches squared, you know, area of flow. Now, what, uh, what FFRE used on the Coyote was a, a V-band, it was a three inch V-band. So this is three inches. Now if we do uh, pi r squared, that comes out to be 7.07 .07 inches, well I can't write, squared. There was some concern early on that the flange might actually make a difference because there's an extra square inch of area on the V-band than there was with the T4. Obviously that didn't come into effect because the turbine housing was just too small for our combinations. Now, when we did all this, when we put this all together, we had no frame of reference for exactly what it would make because uh, HPT does not make an F3 7680 off the shelf. Like I said, they make a 7675 and they make a 7880. So the 7675, I'm sorry, 7675 is rated at 1350. The 7880 is rated at 1425. So our guess, just looking, you know, running numbers and, and scientific wild ass guess, was that we were gonna see 1400 horsepower. We're gonna split the difference, right? Uh, in actuality, we were, we were dead on on the compressor side, but none of us had any idea that we were gonna choke the turbine so much. Um, we, the engines were not able to get to their you know, peak RPM that they were designed to run at uh, because they were making so much exhaust, they were choking the, the turbine by you know, 7,500 at peak. Um, it just, it wasn't letting the engines run. Uh, however, I will say, it was damn impressive what the turbos did in such a bad combination. When we were talking to HPT after the fact, they seem surprised that we got that much horsepower in these combinations because there was so much exhaust. They expected the, the turbine to be choked out even sooner so that we couldn't get the impeller speed out of the, out of the compressor side and we probably would have seen in the 1300, the low 1300s. So effectively, I mean, even though the turbos performed well, they still didn't perform as we expected, as we intended. So. The problem is, if we maintain these turbos when we put them in the truck in the C10 shootout, n the engines are not gonna be happy. Like, this is not gonna work in a drag racing environment. They're only gonna be able to spin to part of their RPM. You start adding real world loads on them. It's just not going to work. So, we went back to HPT. We asked them to help us out. Because the thing is, we didn't want to add a ton of power, but we needed to make sure that the engines were happy. So, our option was switch to a larger turbo. So, what we did, obviously in the, in the F3 series, the 80 millimeter is the largest exhaust housing they make. End of story. There is no bigger. So we can't free up the turbo anymore and stick with a mid-frame turbo. The next option we had was to go to their large frame turbos, which is what they call the F5. Now that's the equivalent to a T6, you know, in, in standard parlance. Um, unfortunately, the smallest turbo they make in the F5 is an 80 
103. Now, what we can do and what they were able to do for us was take that 80 millimeter wheel and cut it down to a 73. So now we have a massive 80, a large frame 80 millimeter turbo, right? So this is an 80, that they basically take two millimeters off on either side to make this an actual 76. Now this 76 in a large frame turbo is much larger than this 76. It's gonna move more air at the same speeds. On the exhaust side, we now, I, I can't even draw it to scale because I've kind of penned my way in. We have a 103 millimeter compressor wheel with an even larger compressor housing. What that's gonna do for us is it's going to move more air, which we didn't really wanna do, which is why we asked them to cut it to a 76, but it's going to let the exhaust breathe like it needs to. What we expect to see from this is the 103 to allow the 9,000 RPM engine speeds that we expected. Now, when doing this, it's going to spin the 76 a little bit faster, and because it's a bigger wheel, it's going to make more power. We're guessing in the neighborhood of 100 to 200 horsepower more. Um, that's not why we're doing it. We're not trying to add power to anything, but we're trying to make the engines happy so that they live for both the drag and drive and the actual competition, right? Because they're gonna be doing some crazy stuff. I think they're actually gonna put them into traffic and then they're gonna be hot lapping them at the drag strip. So we need the engines to be happy. One thing to note here is the much larger exhaust housing will actually be limited, not limited, but we're choosing the 112 AR ratio. Now you might look at that number and go, well, if it's a 112 and you were choking out the 124 over here, you're going to a smaller one, you're gonna choke it out. Well, AR ratios are only accurate when you're comparing similar housings. The 103 T6 housing is massively larger than the T4 80 millimeter housing. So that 112 AR is still gonna flow more than the 124 in the midframe. So like I said, talking to HPT, they're doing all this for us. Luckily they had a couple compressor housings they could cut down to match a cut down 80. Uh, so, now, so now what we're running is a 76 103 F5 1.12 AR. These are the new turbos that are gonna go on the trucks. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to get to put the engines back on the engine dyno with the new turbos. Uh, I, I really wish we could. There's just not enough time in the production schedule. But fortunately, because they're gonna be competing at the track, we're gonna be able to get a nice head-to-head -head comparison uh, and we're gonna be able to see what the turbos are gonna do. I'm really excited to see, uh, see what the engines do actually in the C10s, and I'm dying to see the numbers that are gonna run. So I know we've got five more episodes before we'll even get to the, the drag racing, but until then, make sure to stay tuned because I'm super excited now that we have what HPT has told us is the right turbo. I'm excited to see what the trucks are gonna do. Uh, but until then, Catch the build series over on Dragzine. We'll be watching right there with you, and I'm stoked to see what they're going to do at the drag strip.